uh, we'll just uh, begin. Um, so welcome everybody to uh, another episode of Cooking with Bryson. Um, my guest chef tonight is Ryan Campbell. Uh, the charity that we picked is Black Girls Code and Ryan will match up to $500 in donations. So as always, post them, tag us, shoot us a DM if you wanna remain anonymous and we'll keep on giving to a good cause. Uh, in the last two weeks, we have raised over $10,000 for various charities and we hope to continue to do that. Um, Ryan, what are we doing tonight? Awesome, hey hey everyone. Uh, so tonight we're making King Guy Chicken, uh, which is a, a, a dish from Laos. Uh, it actually means grilled chicken, uh, but apparently it's one of their kind of traditional uh, street foods, um, but it's super good. This is actually courtesy of a, a YouTube chef called Chef John, um, or a blog from Food Wishes, if, if anyone's familiar with him. Um, so we took this from him and like we make this at our house like at least once a week. It's so good. Um, so it really is like seriously, it's like the best grilled chicken recipe ever. So it's a it's a marinade. It's a sauce. It's sweet, salty, spicy, umami, like all those awesome things. So um, and, and what are you drinking while we cook? I am drinking. What is this called? It's called Scale of Complexity. It's a, a beer from Four Hands Brewery in St. Louis. Ah, oh, cool. I am drinking an oak fermented Chardonnay. Thought that would pair well with the chicken. Very nice. Cool. Uh, so yeah, um, ping guy chicken, grilled chicken, pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, this dish is traditionally served with uh, rice uh, and I think a, a papaya a shred, like shredded papaya salad. We're gonna make that tonight. Um, I am gonna do the rice. Um, as a side, because you need a, you need some sort of side. Um, I was going to have this done uh, beforehand, uh, but I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you guys just super quick. Um, but it's really easy. Take a pot and uh, measure out some rice. This so is what I call the Chinese grandmother measurement. Just sort of pour it in. And at least one finger, you know, one finger's depth worth of water over it is all you need. Yeah. Yeah, we do like a, um, I think it's pretty much like a one-to-one -one ratio, but it seems like every every cooker is slightly different. But yeah, I think you're right. we will definitely get it. Um, I like to rinse my rice just real quick. It'll kind of rinse off some of that excess starch on the outside uh, because I like more of a looser rice. If you if you like sticky rice, then you wouldn't, you'd want to skip that step. Yeah, so the starches when you boil it will actually cause the rice to bind together when you serve it. So when you rinse it out like that, you're removing those starches like Ryan said. Uh, and then to that, I'm actually gonna add, uh, so basically I said one-to-one -one for my cooker. Um, it's maybe a little one-to-one -one plus just a little bit. This is actually homemade uh, stock that my wife makes from all of our discarded celery and carrots and chicken chicken wing tips and chicken backs and necks and you know whatever and then she uh she basically puts that in a big pot and boils it down to where it's nothing and then strings it skims the fat off and it's it's beautiful back uh, back during the great depression they used to call that the victory pot and they would keep it in the ice box and whatever was left over from any dinner you would just keep throwing it into that so you could constantly be using it as like a perpetually replenishing stock awesome So I'm just gonna get that going, and then that should be uh, that should be done by the time the chicken's done. I'm also going to go ahead and put uh, my boiler on the high setting. Um, and um, uh, oh, the, the type of rice I'm making is basmati, but it doesn't really matter. You can make whatever you're making. Okay, so we're gonna be using the the broiler to do the chicken. Yeah. So you usually I use my gas grill or chopper grill. Uh, but just for you know the the sake of TV, um, I figured out a I would grow the line. Uh, I actually tried this out earlier in the week and it works fine. Because um, if you think about it, a broiler it's just like an upside down grill gas grill inside. Um, so it came out great. Uh, so I'm just going to do that. That way I'm not having to walk in, in and out and do all that. So uh, I think it'll be still be good. I think you know the the original recipe calls for a charcoal grill, but I mean do do whatever gets the job done. It's just it's just cooking chicken. It's not rocket science. It's chicken surgery. Chicken surgery. Um, 
So first, uh, when we start to make the marinade, the first thing is uh, we need to uh, grind up a bunch of whole black peppercorns. Um, uh, um, so it, I'll do that with a mortar and pestle. You don't have to have this. If you have a food processor or a coffee grinder, or you can just grind it yourself with one of those uh, one of those grinders. That works too. Um, doesn't really matter, but this is kind of like I guess the traditional way to do it. Um, so this calls for one to two, depending on how you tolerate spice. One to two tablespoons, uh, depending on how you tolerate spice. So I do too. I like we like spicy foods and in this kitchen and uh, we'll just give that a grind and you're looking for kind of a you're looking for a course I mean you don't want to completely pulverize but at the same time you don't um, you don't want someone to just bite into a big chunk of <laughs> black you know black peppercorn I already did my marinade in advance and have been soaking. So I'm just gonna follow along here. How long do you typically um, marinate the chicken before you do this? Yep, yeah, absolutely. And I uh, I have some, uh, I also have some pre-marinated myself with uh, someone's gonna do a little TV magic uh, later on and uh, and pull that out. But yeah, the, uh, the recipe calls for four to 12 hours marinade on this. Um, and so I put mine on earlier today, and you know, honestly, I, I, I tested some even before. Like I've done, you know, I've made this recipe hundreds of times, and like, I mean, 30 minutes is probably enough if you're in, in, in a pinch, you know. So it doesn't need to be beyond 12 hours. If you forget, or you're in a hurry, or you, know, you get home from work, and you're wondering what's going to be for dinner tonight, I want to make that ping guy that, that dude on the internet made one time. You know, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can do it in 30 minutes. So I have learned there is a limit to this stuff. Um, I've been uh, working with different my uh, um, uh, different vinegar marinades for grilling. Yep. And um, so I do a lot of brine and grilling or uh, vinegar with that. And <laughs> turns out three days is too much for chicken. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> it like almost like cook it right and kind of make it soft. Yeah, no, it did. Yeah, it pretty much had almost uh, cooked it through. Um, and it, it, uh, it was, I use a lot of vinegar and it really wow. overwhelmed the flavor of the chicken. So that's, that's part of why I do that kind of experimentation in my free time to kind of see what the limits of different things are versus trying it on and trying it live. Right. Yeah. You probably don't want to go, no, no, I wouldn't go over 12 hours, definitely not three days on this one. Um, I'm trying to show this to the camera if hopefully we can kind of, you know, it might be a little too dark, but going for basically just a, cor a coarse grind, you know, basically where you don't see any whole peppercorns anymore and that's it. So I can go into our mixing bowl. Set that aside. Uh, and then next up is kind of the, the star of the show really for this dish is a ton of cilantro. Um, so what I have here is an entire bunch of cilantro. Um, this is actually we got from the store. We actually over, we've been making so, this is awesome. That looks awesome. We've been making this so much here uh, that it, it, we've over harvested all of our cilantro and it's, it's kind of too hot here anyways. Um, but so we had to get this from the store, but um, it's uh, try to find the biggest bunch you can find uh, at the store and it's great. Um, the stem, we're going to use the whole thing. The stems and the leaves uh, taste exactly the same. Um, so flavor-wise, there's no difference, especially as finely as we're going to chop this. It's pretty, you just use it all. Um, side note, if some people are genetically predisposed to not liking cilantro, um, so you can use in, uh, equal parts basil, uh, mint, um, and parsley. Uh, it, and it basically kind of approximate the, uh, a similar flavor. But we'll just, we'll start kind of just by rough chopping this. I love that you're using the stems. I agree with that. Most people don't like the stems because when you're, when you're typically putting it in the dish, it's, you get that like the fibrous kind of taste to it, unless you really cook it down, but the flavor is the same. Yep. Yeah. And like I said, you know, like chopping it, we're going to chop it pretty, I mean, we're not going to sit here 
and mince it all night, but we'll chop it pretty finely. And like, you're going to be hard pressed to like, to really even notice a difference. We'll just give several passes with the knives. I kind of like to go with my, my, my pan flat on the back of the knife and just kind of go across like this and break it down like that until it gets a little bit finer. And then I'll hold the knife stationary, at least with, with the point, and then kind of just kind of like rock it back and forth uh, through the, this big old pile. Once you gotta get to a, a more manageable size. My dog, my dogs are getting hungry. Did you, uh, did you turn your broiler on already? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, was, I wanted to get the hop. All right, I'll uh, get mine on. I went ahead and, and lined a, a, a big cooking pot with foil too. You know, you don't have to use foil. You can, you know, roll naked or put a silk hat down or whatever, whatever floats your boat. Very zen about cooking as far as kind of like do what you like, how you like, and the thought, you know, it's more than more than one way to make ping guy chicken. <laughs> hey, nobody's needing it but you. <laughs> uh, I also I wanted to dress mine up a little, so I got some baby corns and I julienned some peppers. So oh, I'll nice. just throw that on the end, get a little more extra. Sounds awesome. Rice is going. I hear the steam. Um, Ryan, have you ever uh, have you ever worked with black garlic? No, I never have. Um, I, I think it might be something that because I, I with the garlic for this. I mean, first of all, everything should have garlic. Um, yeah. But it has, it's it's fermented garlic. So they, the cloves are just fermented in there. And it has a really kind of different taste than traditional garlic. Uh -huh. um, so worth something worth uh, experimenting with to just try a little bit different. And it's like, it's really sticky. I mean, you can see that's an entire clove and you can see how oh. small it's shrunk as it's fermented. Oh, nice. So this is something I thought I would try with in the uh, dipping sauce to just give it a little different flavor. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That's what it's all about, just trying different things and you know, ripping on. It's like a you know, good musicians, they don't just play the same old notes over and over and over. They you know, they riff and try different things. Right, Ryan, if you were if we're playing jazz right now, what inch, what would you be doing? Would you be singing? Would you be playing an instrument? What, what would what would what would be your jam? I don't know. Probably just like standing in the corner tapping my foot. <laughs> Dude, I can see you on the saxophone wailing. Yeah, just like, like letting go and, and I can do that. Yeah. absolutely. What was it? Uh, what's uh, the guy from Parks and Rec? His old his his. Uh, oh, uh, the Duke. The Duke. Yeah. Duke. Yeah. Um, oh, what's the name of that comedian? Uh, Nick. Nick. Nick something. Alderman. Yeah. Yeah. Love that guy. Yeah. See, dude, I see it. I can see it in you, man. I can do you it. You gotta let your inner Duke out. <laughs> so this is looking pretty good. I'll try to show this. Oh, the lighting's not real great over here, but you know, finely that chopped. Finely chopped, sir. Yeah, that's uh, you know, not crazy, but it's uh, enough to where I don't really see individual pieces of stem anymore. It's mostly just kind of looks like chopped green stuff. So this will go all into the bowl that we had with the black pepper. Uh, then I'm going to reserve a little bit for our dipping sauce. I think the recipe says a quarter of a cup. I'm just going to eyeball that just a little bit. There's uh, plenty of cilantro in both stages of this dish, both the marinade and the sauce. So it really, really can't go wrong. It's a really good beer. 
Um, while I have my board out and before I start uh, doing meat, I want to uh, also go ahead and prep my garlic and the lime uh, for the dipping sauce later. So I'll just just having the lime. Lime juice already made. Nice. <laughs> here. It, it comes in the store this way. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Shortcut for those of you that are busy, don't have time to do a bunch of prep work. Well, I mean, also in this pandemic environment, I've found my grocery store for the last three months has yeah. not had everything I would ever want to do. So for me, having to cook along with everybody each week, I mostly am like, all right, I'm going to substitute this. I'm going to do it this way. This is what I have already because I can't always get what I, you know, is available. Right. So this is just normal garlic, and I'm just using the the back of my chef's knife to kind of pop that clove out, lightly tap it, and just that clove theoretically should just pop right out of this little skin. I think the recipe calls for four cloves of garlic, uh, but I always up that if not like one and a half times, if not double. So I'm doing, I think this is seven, but it's like it's like six good sized ones and then one little dinky one. So. All right. So wait, where you're just uh, you're just mincing your garlic right now, or your? No, I'm, just, I'm just peeling it before I put. A, uh, a bunch of raw chicken on the board. Okay. So I don't want to, I'm lazy. I don't want to do Oh, nice. So is that the black, the black garlic? No, no, this is the black one. The black one does not press like that. It, it, yeah. it's sticky and squishy. So yeah, that's yeah. a whole clove. You can, I mean, you can see, like I said, you can see how much that shrunk compared to a normal one. And yeah, this good. really like works better when you um, like kind of, it almost like forms a paste when you squish it. Yeah. Uh, very easy to peel because the it's shrunk inside the clove, so the the outside just comes right off. That's so cool. Now, you know what? Tell me, give me afterward. Give me your address. I'll uh, I'll send you a um, I'll send you a thing. Cool. That'll be my thank you for you coming on the show. Hey, no problem. I'm happy to do this. Fun. I. I uh... I don't do, I honestly don't do most of the cooking in my house. My wife is an awesome cook. She does a lot of it, but during the summer and springtime when the weather's nice, I do like to grill a lot. So I do, I do do a lot of the grilling and stuff. What do you do when you're not cooking? Oh, all kinds of stuff. I like to take the dogs to the park, play video games when I can, I like to read a lot. Um, like to tinker in the house and kind of, yeah, <laughs> and, you know, build little projects and you know stuff like that. What's, so, the, what's the video game of choice these days? So I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2 a lot. I have been for months, and I just I just love it. I'm on my I think second playthrough right now, and just such a great story and you know the visuals and the, the game world is just is is so engaging. It's I love it so. I, uh, I played the first one. I haven't played the second one. Oh, man, you got to check it out, man. It's so good. It's so good. So uh, cut up those limes and the garlic. I'm just going to set that aside for now. Um, and then let's. Uh, we're ready for – make sure I'm on track here. Yep. Uh, we'll wait off on the chicken right now, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the rest of the uh, sauce. Uh, ingredients for the marinade. Uh, so next up on our kind of a wetware is a uh, oyster sauce. This is kind of a sweet, sticky Asian sauce. Uh, recipe calls for one, three tablespoons of this. Um, you could use poison or even like a sweet, a thickened sweet soy sauce or Something like that, if that's what you have on hand, or um, doesn't really matter as long as you know you're just kind of looking for like a kind of thick, uh, sweet, kind of sticky Asian sauce that's just gonna like help the uh, help the marinade kind of bind and hold together and be thick and kind of coat the fish better, or not the fish, the, the chicken. 
Uh, then we're going to do two tablespoons of soy sauce. Any particular soy sauce that you're a fan of? We usually get Kikoman, um, just because what they have at the big box where we shop at in bowl. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what we get. And we usually put, we usually, we'll buy a big, uh, big jar of it, and then we'll put them in these little squeezy bottles. Really awesome. Make it yeah, I like the squeezy bottles. That's a really cool idea. I really, I should upgrade to that. <laughs> Um, next ingredient is Asian fish sauce, which this stuff, if you're not familiar with it, it is super strong on the nose, uh, but like there's no substitute for like the type of like umami flavor that it gives. It's just, it, you got to do it. I know like I was, a I was tough to convert myself at first, but like this stuff is, it makes everything better. It really does. So, so the nose is a very heavy, like fermented fish. Yeah. <laughs> it's. It's very unique. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy strong smelling, and you know, like our kitchen will smell. And but it's like it makes the food taste so good. It gives it that underlying kind of like umami notes, and it's just it's awesome. My my fish sauce has uh, lost its label. That's how much. <laughs> nice, perfect. <laughs> Can you imagine just sort of finding that? You know, it's like oh, it's a plastic bottle of stuff. Right. <laughs> it's just like a dark water. <laughs> I'll see. Uh, next up is the recipe calls for vegetable oil. Um, we usually use grapeseed oil. Um, this is neutral flavored oil that has a relatively high smoke point, um, so it's good for grilling and it's a little bit, uh, a little bit healthier than just pure vegetable oil that's hydrogenated. And this is more natural, I guess. Uh, so we kind of prefer to use this stuff. But you can use anything. You can even use olive oil or whatever you want. You cannot use olive oil with broiling. It will burn. Yeah. It will smoke. You will. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, olive oil will smoke. Yeah. You will have to vacate the premises while your smoke alarm goes off. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, another uh, also, uh, olive oil actually turns uh, toxic at high temperatures too. Really? I did not know. I didn't know. It no, it's not going to poison you, but it's it's like a release of carcinogens or something. Yeah. I just, I just know it's bad, and I never do it at anything above like 450. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we we never do just because of the smoke. Because our if our smoke alarm goes off, I think we're like it's gone off so many times. We're like one away be, until the fire department starts actually charging us, and uh, and then you know the dogs hate it and they freak out and it's just yeah avoid that. My smoke alarm goes off like once a week. <laughs> so I'm just giving this all a mix. Um. I haven't added any salt to this, and the recipe doesn't call for it, and I, and I find that it doesn't really need it because um, it has enough soy sauce uh, in it. I don't know if hopefully you guys can kind of see what that looks like. You want it a little bit, not you don't want it too wet or not too thick, just kind of a you know enough to where it's kind of coat the chicken and stay. Um, yeah, I uh, I don't usually add um, I do not usually add any salt. I don't I don't find that it. I don't find that it uh, needs it. I'm just pulling out the chicken ready to go. So I'm using, uh, and the dogs are now highly interested in what is happening. Um, tonight I'm using uh, boneless, skinless thighs. Um, I think that's what the recipe calls for, but you can use any, I mean, you can use anything you want. If you wanted to use a bone-in thigh, skin, bone -in with skin. if you wanted to use breasts, fine. It probably, it probably won't, the flavor yeah, won't be as... So breast, breast won't work with a broil like that because it'll dry out. They're too thick. Yeah. Um, that's actually one of the advantages of having the bone in is it helps retain more moisture. Um, but yeah, I'm doing bone in skin thighs. Perfect. Yeah.
Yeah, thighs. I mean, thighs are the juiciest. They're the most flavorful. They're the most forgiving. Uh, so I, I just love, you know, even though we're not grilling tonight, um, I love thighs. And I uh, give these a little quick trim. Not not going to go too crazy. Just any like big chunks of fat that are hanging off. I'll get this kind of cut that off. Just because you don't necessarily want a big, huge chunk of fat. Also, these are uh, these are great Scooby snacks for the puppies. My wife is saying off camera that she she prefers the bone in skin on. So you got you got points scored with her. We'll no, that's, so that's one of my favorite ways to to cook thighs is because there's actually there's more fat in there and that that flavor with the skin, and yeah. so you just can without even putting I mean really any oil in, you just put them skin down, let that oil cook out, naturally does it. I mean it. Nice. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cook mine down a little bit so that because I don't I don't think I'll be able to get uh, broil cooked through all the way without burning it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, cook it out a little bit, and then uh, throw it in the broiler. Do you when you do your thighs? Do you kind of like do you do any like do you cut them? Do you like little slices? Oh, um, so I know what you mean. Um, I do that for duck. So okay. duck yeah. the skin. I'll I'll score the skin because the you it's so much thicker and as waterfowl, there's a really deep layer of fat, and you need to score it that way to get the fat to come out. Um, I, I've actually never really bothered to do that with chicken thighs because I just they don't they're not as thick. Yeah. But duck, absolutely, that's what I'll do. In fact, I've got <laughs> I've got a bunch of duck in my freezer that I I need to cook at some point. Nice. Any well, future chefs sure. listening? I want to make duck. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. See it, soft mouth. So we gotta take a quick break for Scooby Snacks. The puppers would be really upset if they didn't get theirs. Good puppies. Hand wash since we just fed the dogs. Uh, and then basically we got our, we got our chicken uh, in the marinade. So basically the next all we want to do is just mix this all up really thoroughly. Make sure we get all the nooks and crannies. Don't be afraid to get in there and just kind of massage it around. Just keep working. Or if in. you are afraid, use a plastic bag and just shake it around. Yeah, yeah, that yeah that will save. Uh, Probably uh, safer from a food contaminant perspective, I would say, and easier. <laughs> My dog is visiting too. She's going, "What? Hey, what? what there's, there's meat out. What's happening?" What's up, man? Yeah, they now that they got a taste. Now they're, I know they're not on camera, but they're right. both under the You're in the way. <laughs> Go away. Back up. What is it about dogs and little children that they stand right behind you? Like I will knock you over by accident. Sorry, Bryce, to say that again. I couldn't hear you over the my, my more Oh no, I was just saying, what is it about dogs and little children that they stand right behind you? Like you're gonna trip over them without yeah, stopping their foot. So after, after I've all mixed it up, this is what it'll look like. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Yeah, so good. I mean, you just kind of let that hang out and get happy for four to 12 hours. But like I said, if you're in a super hurry, 30 minutes would do it. Be fine. I'm just gonna cover you with plastic wrap. You can see the sear I got on the top. Whoop, turn it, turn it over. Oh, awesome. Hold on. Ah, there we go. Oh, that looks amazing. Nice. So 
So I'll just kind of pat that down. And then we'll do the, uh, the TV magic, as I mentioned earlier. Pop this in the fridge for four to 12 hours. Then we got this one that I did earlier today. So after, uh, after it's, it's uh, marinated and been in the fridge, it's ready to go into the broiler or grill or whatever. Whatever device you're using that day. So we'll just grab these. Um, I like to do kind of like the the uh, if you're using boneless skinless thighs do like the flat side up i guess i don't know what the technical term for that is but the side that skin would be on just do that for the kind of the first side that's kind of get <laughs> this is where the skin would be <laughs> right <laughs> if it had skin dude just i mean Look how pretty that is. Like, that's just an initial sear. It's like gold and like you gotta loving it. Skin, man. That's what skin gives you. Yeah, skin I should have done skin. Every everyone agrees. This is just what we had in the freezer. Hey, I ain't judging, man. Whatever you got. <laughs> So I got these ready on the pan, and I'm just going to pop those in. Um, the, uh, they don't need to be on the like the the top rack in in the broiler, but pretty close. I mean, you don't you don't want it you don't want it middle high ish, I guess. So on the uh, on the grill, these usually take about five minutes per side. I think I'm going to try to give this about six uh, in the broiler on the high, on my broiler's highest setting. Um, so if you have, I have a gas broiler. If you have electric, it might take a little bit longer, uh, but it shouldn't. If you you know give it plenty of time to heat up, it should be should be fine too. So, but I mean the big thing is we want to cook this to 165 or shoot for it um thighs are really forgiving so even if we go a little bit over 165 they'll still be juicy and delicious um so but 165 it's done yeah that's the advantage of the marinade you're going to be able to help retain a lot more moisture yep so while we're waiting for that to go we can go ahead and finish up the sauce and we have um, the, the little little bit of cilantro that we reserved earlier from the big uh, big chopping I'm going to cheat and use a little one of these handy little garlic presses on my garlic that's not cheating that's the best way to do garlic man <laughs> it's, it's so easy oh my gosh we we didn't have one of these for years and then once we got one, we were like, what were we even doing? <laughs> like how, how did we cook? Like some savage chopped mince and garlic with a knife? Only way to go, man. Chop, chop. Yeah, these things are awesome. Yeah, so that's it. So the recipe said, like I said, it, the recipe calls for four, and we went seven, so, you know, do you, you know, that's all the taste. That's just you cooking. Trim off a little bit if it's not coming through. So we got our cilantro, we've got our garlic. garlic. Um, and then the recipe calls for, I think, um, it says sambal olek. Um, I think is the name of it. it. It's a it's a Thai chili sauce, Thai chili paste. 
we don't have that. Um, we have sriracha, um, which will work fine. Um, if you had like chili garlic or you know any sort of that kind of like Southeast Asian chili sauce would 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 be totally fine. So what I'm doing since this involves honey is uh, Carolina Lena Tarazas, who did one of the early episodes, did this incredible pork loin. She introduced me to Mike's Hot Honey, which is chili infused oh. honey. So I'm gonna use this in here because it really seems to like kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, heck yeah, That's amazing. I love it. Yeah, I haven't got, haven't picked up any of that, but I hear it's great. I've, I've heard like it's uh, really good on pizza. It's like the big, the big rage right now. I have not tried that yet. That sounds really That's good. Word on the street. Uh, but anyway, it's one tablespoon of um, some sort of hot sauce. I go a little heavy on that. Uh, and then more fish sauce. Surprise, surprise. And we'll do another tablespoon of that. We're going umami, baby. Again, this is like umami bomb. Which apparently, according to uh, Mac, you can uh, you can also just get that in a, in a Trader Joe's uh, spice condiment that they make in umami spice. Really? Oh. Yeah, so she's going to let us know how that works out after this episode. Okay, sounds cool. Uh, honey to taste. Um, I think the recipe calls for two to three tablespoons. I usually kind of hedge on the light side of the honey because I don't like it overly sweet, but that's another kind of one of those you just kind of season and how you like it. Um, and then vinegar, which is kind of the star of this show here in the sauce, at least. Um, two thirds of a cup, so quite a lot of vinegar, but this is gonna, this uh, this is seasoned rice vinegar. Um, it's gonna it? give it a nice tart uh, kind of twang. That's kind of undercut all of those other big flavors that we've that we've added. So Ryan, what is seasoned rice vinegar? So I have I have regular rice vinegar. Um, you know, honestly, I don't know. I think that I think it's the same thing. Uh, so seasoned has extra salt, apparently. Okay, mine is sodium free, so I think I do not. Yeah. So apparently, the difference. I'm getting note cards off off stage. Uh, <laughs> from the expert in the house. <clears throat> Excuse me. So seasoned rice vinegar has salt, and regular rice vinegar does not have salt. I'm going to add soy sauce then to add my salt back in with a little more flavor. Cool. And then we'll do the uh, the lime that I cut up earlier. Oh, sorry. So it has salt and a little bit of sugar. But I think with uh, I, I would imagine the amount of sugar is probably negligible as you know considering we're adding honey and then we'll just i'll just juice this lime real quick and add this in this will give it this will even uh enhance that vinegar's kind of tart punch to, to cut through all those other big strong flavors that we've got going on So I think that was my timer for my chicken. Grab a clean pair of tongs. We'll check this and see. Uh, hopefully you guys you can hear me from over here. My sauce came out pretty well. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Perfect. Yeah, I think good. I'm going to give my chicken another minute or two in there. It doesn't look, it, I mean, I, I don't want it black, you know, as far as like, like carbon burnt black charred, but I want, I want a little kind of, you know, brown color on it. So there's my sauce. It's a little bit, it looks a little different than yours just because it has that redness from the, the chili. Let me just give us a little, little taste for seasoning. Man, that's really good. That's what I love about cooking is you can taste as you go and dial mm. it in. Yep. Yeah, that sauce is, for the first few times I made this dish, 
I didn't even make the sauce because it was like it was the chicken was so good on its own. I was like, it doesn't even need that. <laughs> and then later on, I made the sauce. I was like, what was I? What was I thinking? <laughs> like this, this stuff is like the the manna from God. You know, like it's so good. It's sweet and salty and oh, it's it's so good. It takes it to eleven. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, so we're pretty much just waiting on. Looks like that my rice is done. We're just kind of waiting on the chicken at this point. All the hard work's done. So what got you into cooking? You know, I think growing up, my dad cooked a lot, and you know, I was always kind of like hanging around him, and him and, you know, you know, I guess just kind of learning the ropes and. You know, like I said, my, my wife is an amazing cook, so she does a lot of, she does the bulk of it, but I love, you know, smoking, barbecuing outside and doing grilling and I, you know, baking bread and, you know, I like helping out in the kitchen. I'm, I'm usually the sous chef, so I, you know, I'm, I'm the knife man and the guy that washes the dishes, and, you know, more often than not, but uh, yeah, I know we just, uh, I think that probably a lot of it just came from a, you know, like necessity when I was younger and like, you know, I had to make, you know, fresh food uh, because it was cheaper, you know? Um, so I think that's where, you know, a lot, just all that together, I guess. All right, that's looking good. We got some good brown going on those. So I'm just going to flip these, throw them back in the oven. I am guessing that this second side, I, well, it's, it's an educated guess because I have tested this at least once. Um, I think the second side will take about four minutes if you're using a boneless, skinless breast. But we'll, we'll see. Basically, at this point, we'll just go and try to go for 165. Meat thermometers are your friend. Yeah, they're so good. We uh, this is the one I use, and it's not a. Um, I can't. I'm not sure. It doesn't say what brand it is. It's not like. There's a there's a there's a name brand that's super good, and you pay a premium for it. And then there's another brand that's like one price category below it, and that's what this is. But this thing works amazing. Uh, I never had any problems with it, and uh, uh, it, it's all these things are a lifesaver. Just kind of pour some of this sauce in there to dish it up, maybe. Has there been any uh, questions from the, uh, the online folks? Uh, there's just been a few comments, no questions yet. But okay. please, if you've got questions for us, ask. So uh, what do you do for a living when you're not cooking or reading or playing Red, Red, Dead, Red Dead Redemption 2? Yeah, so I, uh, I work for CrowdStrike. I, uh, I work on a team that does managed detection and response. So we uh, basically we we manage our clients' um, deployments of CrowdStrike all the way from detection through uh, the response and remediation phase. So basically, kind of like an incident handler. How long you been there? Like pretty much right at one year. Where were we at before? I was at. Um, Express scripts for that. 
a very different companies, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, one was, you know, very much, you know, old school, you know, massive Fortune 20, you know, huge company where, you know, it takes six months to change anything and, you know, very, you know, um, you know, just, uh, you know, not a dynamic place at all. And then, you know, going to more, you know, CrowdStrike has a has more of a startup kind of culture to it. I, you know, even though we've been public for a year now, that it's like, you know, you, <laughs> I was about you, to say, you IPO 13 months ago. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we definitely still have a startup culture. I mean, you could have an idea and have, you know, an idea for something to change and have it implemented in, in a week, you know, whereas, you know, instead of like six months or a year, or a year. So it's uh, just, yeah, it's crazy. How, how it's getting crazy. Crazy. I love it. What do you think uh, makes it like that? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's just kind of like a res I mean, I don't know why startups are, you know, more receptive to, to a new idea. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm hearing some like reverb on the audio. So what's uh, what's the most interesting story you can tell us from your one year at CrowdStrike? The most interesting. I don't know if I'm legally able. You can sanitize it. You can anonymize it. There, you know, there, no shit. There I was this one time. I picked right. up the phone. Change yeah. the name. Change the genders. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, give me a second to think about it. I'll check on the chicken. <laughs> chicken is I'll, good to I'll call for a little bit. So the most interesting. So I'm at one. 50, so we're not quite there yet. Well, all right, so easier question. What has been the biggest thing you've learned in the last year? Biggest thing I've learned in the last year is um, wow, learned, learned so much in the last year. I would say that, you know, um, willingness to like try new things and you know kind of like um you know it, if you feel that you're not like you're kind of like stagnating in your you know current role or you're not being challenged you know having kind of like the courage to like do something different uh and make a move uh, you know I, I found that which ultimately what i did and uh, i mean paid off you know huge dividends um so you know i think that you know kind of I guess that's more of like being self, you know, so you know, self-awareness and like I think it's important to like you know check in on yourself and you know, like where you're at and your development goals um and, and stuff like that, and, you know, and um you know, go go for some things, you know, take a chance. What's something you wish you'd done earlier? Probably wish I would have gotten into cybersecurity earlier <laughs> before I did. I was a, I was kind of a late career changer. Um, and, you know, being in cybersecurity is the best thing that's ever happened to me. So, you know, I definitely, you know, wish I would have made that, you know, you know, that jump before, before I did. What, uh, what kept you from doing it earlier? You know, I don't know. It was probably like a, you know, just a perfect storm of, you know, reasons and excuses i probably i would say you know like there was no, no nothing necessarily preventing me it was just kind of like you know i've always been uh kind of like a curious person interested in a, in a lot of different things um and kind of like going in a million different directions um and then you know eventually it was just kind of like well you know I need, like i need to focus on something you know and uh you know follow i have too many passions so just pick one uh, and you know, enroll enroll with it, you know. Uh, so I think that was that was probably it. So it's about you know bouncing around to different things. That is the most common theme that I hear whenever I talk to people about cybersecurity is that that passion, that curiosity for for going and finding things. And I think the areas where 
our industry has been very uh, fortunate that we have been able to um, pursue those things because it's a fairly lucrative space. And so it enables us to um, to get to go and do that. Um, it's, uh, I think, a very lucky profession in that regard. Yeah, absolutely, 100% agree. Oh yeah, those are looking good. What's oh, something that you uh, want to get into? So you've now been in the space for a little while. You're at one of the hottest companies in the entire world. Yep. What else do you want to do? Well, I uh, 10 minute 165. I uh, I want to keep learning. I keep learning. You know, I, I feel like when I, you know, since I was a late career changer, I was kind of at like a technical deficit. You know, so I, you know, dealt with a lot of, you know, kind of imposter syndrome and stuff like that. But, you know, realized that's not really real. You know, ultimately. Um, so, but uh, you want to keep like upskilling, like on the technical side. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy like. Uh, like security, like communication. So whether that's like blog posts or you know presenting and stuff like that, that's some. That's kind of like the the next kind of area where I would kind of like to like to, you know, and explore and grow. And it's kind of that communication part. You know, whether that's you know, at a technical conference for security people, or even just like, I don't know, like you know, something you know more kind of like community focused. That's not for security people, but that, yeah, it's kind of something that kind of like the next kind of next phase. I kind of like to. Uh, explore. Have you presented before? So only uh, one time. I, I it was at a <laughs> yeah. Is that a well, I guess I'm presenting right now? You have been presenting for the last 50 minutes. Yeah. So I guess technically this is my would be my third time. So I've done a. I presented the first time was at uh, Falcon, which is CrowdStrike's vendor conference. Yeah. No uh, yeah. So I, I was there last November, which was awesome. Great experience. Had a great time, uh, and then I've done a presented a kind of like a webinar on with the old, if you're familiar with Ultimate Windows Security with Randy Smith. Um, I pre presented a webinar with him, uh, which is a cool, which is really cool, and kind of like you know like you know like you know, I had kind of like you know starstruck, uh, and then, yeah, this is this would be my third. So, but this is easy. This is just drinking beer and cooking. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm pro at that. <laughs> Well, I'm going to make a quick pitch to you. So, um, okay, Con is it hasn't announced it yet, but they're going to be doing a, a version two conference um, mid July, and they have an entire new speakers track. And what oh. they do is they pair you with a coach to work with you on your presentation, work with you on the the stuff. Um, and it sounds like that might be a great opportunity for you to kind of step out a little bit and have somebody help you who's done you know presented a lot before help you through that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I honestly I hadn't thought about it at all until you just you were like, oh yeah, you know I want to present, and I'm like, I actually know a place that the entire thing is around helping people present. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that like it's uh you know it's kind of terrifying for me at first, but then it's like it's but I want to do it too. And I, I don't know if it's like like a you know like a like a masochistic thing or or what, but you know like. It's it's fun once you do it and kind of get over the fear, you know, face your fears and you know jump off the deep end. So I do I do enjoy it a lot. So the the way I think about it is a candle loses nothing by lighting other candles on fire, but it's pretty scary to light that fire, right? And I think that's the motivation that's there is that you want to help those other folks, but it requires you to step outside of your comfort zone to do so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's a really cool way to think about it. Um, so we do have a question here. What did you do before InfoSec? So you said you worked at Ex Express Scripts. I don't know yeah. if you were doing InfoSec there or not, but what were you doing before security? So a million different things. Uh, I was very much a rambler in my younger days. Uh, <laughs> so you know, I've done I've done everything. You know, like my so my academic background is in anthropology and archaeology. Uh, so I did that. Uh, you know, did uh, some field work for a while in, in archaeological field work. Um, I, you know, I've also I've taught kindergarten in Taiwan. Uh, you know, I've you taught. You were a kindergarten teacher in Taiwan. Yeah. 
yeah for like for a season yeah uh yeah it's a uh a little long story like but my wife and i you know kind of did a, a post-grad trip in taiwan uh she did longer a longer tour than i did i was only there basically one season but uh before deciding like where we wanted to go with like graduate school and whatnot i uh, wanted to do something exciting so uh we're, we were there for a little while and yeah taught taught you know english as a second language to kindergartners and it was, i mean it was the easiest job ever all you got to do is like sing and dance and like make make fun of yourself and entertain little five-year-olds and they love it you know so um i can see how you want the concept. yeah entertain five-year-olds this is what we do <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> no but uh you know i've also like i've done worked in uh, restaurants and bars like restaurants is kind of where i learned how to cook and stuff um so you know i've done bartending driven a delivery truck all kinds all kinds of different stuff so yeah there's it was a uh, lot lots of different things before I like found you know found my place, I guess. Well, my chicken is done. How how is yours looking? I am ready to go. Sweet. I think we are ready to place. Yeah. I'm just gonna release the steam on my cooker here and not take it. Nope, I think it's, it's all good. So the, the dipping sauce, how do you do it? You just sort of keep it on the side? Yeah, I uh, I think keep it on the side and maybe do just like a little spoon kind of over on top. So I am going to, it's maybe like, that's probably too much rice, but maybe a cup of rice. And we'll do one of those. I think I'm just going to take a little spoon of this beautiful sauce and just kind of just right on top. Maybe give the rice a little hit. My wife also makes this homemade chili oil with uh, Szechuan peppercorns. So I might just give that a little, just give the whole plate a little bit of that. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, I don't know what magic or sorcery she puts into it. I know that there's such long peppercorns involved, but beyond that, I, maybe some sesame oil. How thick is the sauce? Um... I, think I mean, it should be about, pretty. It should, it should be pretty nice. watery. That looks about right. Yeah, that looks good. It's a slight viscosity. Yeah, just a, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, mine is. My, I think mine's a little bit less than yours, but. I mean, I don't think like if you dipped it, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't think you'd want to coat it, but. <laughs> Well, when you're ready, um, you can hold your plate up and we will do our pose. Awesome. Okay, see? Ready? Yep. yep, it's ready. Got it. Perfect. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Very happy here. Did you try it? I did. Awesome. Mm. 
that's the hardest thing for me is waiting. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to eat it. Oh man. Mm. A little bit of you know brown char on the chicken. That sweet and spicy sauce. Oh my gosh. Mm. It's awesome. All right. Well, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for joining us. Any any last words of wisdom you would like to leave us with? Um, no, I'm just you know, have fun and keep keep trucking. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> have fun and keep chicken. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Ryan, it has been a pleasure to have you on the show. This has You're been awesome. Fun. I guess I could expect nothing less from a Taiwanese. Uh, kindergarten teacher, a bartender, a restaurateur, somebody working at Express Scripts and is at CrowdStrike. Yep. Thank you for teaching us Pygin Chicken. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Check it out.